Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, you should go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on this kind of fucking hot garbage in future. If this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. Hopefully you have already hit that subscribe button. Today's deck profile, we are going for some questionably skimpy birdie women. That's right, we're taking a look at harpies. Now, whatever you're into, I'm not really here to judge you. If you're into birdie women, that's entirely up to you. I'm merely here as a vessel to bring you exactly what you desire. And with that in mind, if you've watched this video and you really do like some skimpy, scantily clad bird women on your Yu-Gi-Oh cards, then you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. The link in the description will get you a nice discount on all their Yu-Gi-Oh singles on their eBay store, as well as Pokemon ones, which they happen to stock as well. But you're not here to listen to me talk absolute fucking nonsense in the camera, or maybe you are, you fucking weirdo. So let's stop fucking around, let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So as a quick note before we get started, let me apologise if you catch the laptop fans in the background, they will be quite loud because, well, that's what it fucking does. Hopefully though, we'll be able to edit most of that out and you won't have too much of an issue. But without further ado, let's get stuck into our bird women. So we start off with Herpes Queen. This is obviously to go ahead and get you straight into your field spell as quickly as possible, but also the fact that it's a bit of a beat stick and the fact that it wears very little clothing. We have double copies of Harpy Harpist. I think that multiples... Uh, really are kind of cloggy, so I think the two works out quite nicely. The fact that it can return cards from your opponent's side of the field is quite nice. Obviously, it returns your own as well. Has some nice synergy there. That it searches and helps dig you deeper into your deck. Triple copies of Chandler, probably one of the better cards in the deck. And honestly, I think you need to play at three. I don't think this is even slightly negotiable. This is going to be one of your main ways of getting into your rank four plays or even doing any of your combo plays at all. You need to see this card as quickly as possible. And so we're playing three copies of it. Perfume is really, really strong, of course, getting you into Elegant Egotist and the like as quickly as possible, which, of course, gets all your players going insane from there. Honestly, as a three of, it's absolutely necessary. Triple copies of Harpy Lady 1. If you want to go for the original Harpy Ladies, this is really the only one you give a shit about. The others don't matter all that much, but this does pump up your monsters massively. And, of course, look at the size of those fucking milkers on that. We then have a single copy of the Wind Barrier Statue. This is for the Samorg locks, who of course you can lock your opponent out. You could go down that route of having the whole Mist Valley thing going on, but fuck that, I'm not that much of a dickhead. Sure, I use Mystic Mine, but I'm not that kind of fucking peasant. And then we move on to our hand traps, triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Uh, it hits basically every single deck in some capacity or another uh, in pretty much every format, and I think as such, three is mandatory. We also have Gamma and driver in here this again comes down to personal preference you could omit these for other hand traps if you prefer it is worth noting that you can use these to synchro into your harpy synchro if you so wish so that is something to keep in mind we have triple copies of elegant egotist here just three special summons from the deck what's not to like about that hysteric sign is a massive way of thinning your deck a really fucking cool card absolutely mandatory at three of in my opinion Triple copies of Forbidden Droplet has some added synergy because it can help send cards like Hysteric Sign to the graveyard. So that is something to keep in mind. It can also help get rid of cards like Mystic Mine. It's a really strong card overall. It helps half your opponent's attack. It can do all kinds of really good stuff. It's just incredibly strong. Anyone who plays this card already knows how good it is. But the fact that there's added synergy in this deck is something you should absolutely take advantage of. Unfortunately, if you don't have access to this, it's kind of sad because it is so strong. You can play other cards if you want to just negate opponent's effects. Cards like Effect Veiler, cards like Infinite Impermanence are all pretty good options. And then we move on to our field spells here. So just two copies of Harpy's Hunting Ground. I think that's all you really need here. The fact that it is quite a back row heavy format is kind of beneficial to have this in there. You could up this to three if you really wanted to, but I wanted to keep the deck nice and tight. And I think the two is more than enough. You run a lot of really strong back row in this deck and honestly your opponent's usually going to pick up other stuff instead and they'll usually leave your field spell alone. And a single copy of Mystic Mine because I like free game ones. Your opponent often isn't actually going to have a way to out this card and usually they'll get you a free win turn one or game one I should say and then you can just side it out if you want to later on down the line and honestly I'm all about those free wins. I don't fucking care how salty my opponent wants to get. 
We have a second copy of Terraforming because we play field spells, so of course it's just an extra copy of either one, depending on what you would like. We have a single copy of Double or Nothing because it is the most free way to get a win. There's honestly no better feeling in this game than slapping down Mystic Mine, waiting till you can get to your Feather Duster and a way to search Double or Nothing. And you honestly just wipe out your opponent's back row and just kill them in one turn. Honestly, one of the best feelings in the game. Harpy's Feather Duster, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's also the fact that it's actually fucking searchable in this deck, which is, is mind-boggling to me. Running a single copy of Upstart Goblin because 39 cards is better than 40. And triple copies of Harpy's Feather Storm. This is like a skill drain just for your opponent, which is absolutely fucking insane. But the fact that you can activate it from your hand is even more fucking cool. And there's also the fact that if your opponent does start trying to pop your back row, which often they will try to do, that if they do remove this from the game, of course you're going to get Harpy's Feather Duster into your hand so you can immediately hit back and punish them. Now as a quick note, in this profile we are not running a side deck, that is because it changes from format to format, from tournament to tournament, and all of that good stuff. There are plenty of videos out there discussing side deck theories, you should absolutely just go and watch them if that is something you want to look into. Cyber Slash Harpy Lady is one that's actually quite cool. Normally you wouldn't be able to make too many uh, level 8 synchros in this deck because you don't really run all that many tuners. But because of the way its effect works, you can of course synchro summon it with basically any two level 4 harpies. The effect here is really, really cool. Of course, your opponent has to kind of usually be stupid enough to set it off. But of course, you can also activate your own to trigger the effect and bounce stuff on your opponent's side of the field. Being able to clear those cards can come in really handy. There's also the fact that it has Harpy Lady in its name, which has massive benefits as well. Harpy's Pet Phantasmal Dragon. There are some really good benefits of using this card. Sadly, it does require three level fours, but... Honestly, I think that the benefits outweigh the negatives. The fact that it stops your stuff being able to be targeted with effects or attacks is really fucking cool. It's a really good way to stall out your opponent for a few turns and then be able to go off from there. Lightning Chidori is a really good way to force out the likes of back row again in a back row heavy format is really beneficial. And honestly, just an incredibly strong card that you should absolutely be taking advantage of. As we're running double or nothing, of course, we want to run Utopia and Utopia double because this is going to be our, one of our main win conditions in this deck, in fact. And you, you'll be surprised how many people still have no way to deal with this. We have a single copy of Baguska. Sometimes you are going to open badly. That's the nature of this deck and anything that is kind of at that rogue level. And being able to just make this and pass turn can honestly keep you in the game for an additional few turns. A single copy of Tornado Dragon because removal of back row is always nice. Again, a back row heavy format. This is a really good option. Abyss Dwell is just a really generic way to put out a lot of decks in the format at the moment. It always has been. It's definitely one of the strongest rank fours in the game. As such, you really need to play it where you can. Running a single copy of Zeus here, we're playing a lot of rank 4s, so being able to make this is really, really cool. Obviously, if you don't have access to this, you can play other cards instead, the likes of Boral Sword and things like that, if you want to make game-winning combinations. But honestly, Zeus is a, a being all of itself, and there's a reason that it commands such a high price point. That there's not really anything else that's quite as easy to access that does all that this does. We move on to our links now. IP Masquerade are just really good for setting up in turn one and being able to interrupt your opponent. Conductor for interrupting your opponent is quite cool. Also, the fact that its name becomes Harpy Lady has its benefits as well. Lambda's here because we're running the package and we have the space to run it. So just being able to kind of interrupt your opponent regardless of the fact that you have monsters on the field is always quite nice. Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Unicorn are both just really good utility cards. And of course, making them off Masquerina during your opponent's turn is always a good feeling. And finally, we have some more Bird of Sovereignty. This is here so that you can summon out the barrier statue and lock your opponent out of being able to play. And that is all for today's deck profile. Thank you very much for making it this far into this video. Hopefully because you've enjoyed it, which means you'll have liked it enough to have hit subscribe and the notification bell, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. Hopefully in either case, this is enough herpes for one sitting. It is worth noting that we don't just do deck profiles on this channel, despite the current slew of onslaught on rolling, that's right, I'm just making words up now. Amount of deck profiles that we're going through at the moment. Currently, that whole thing that's going on with the sniffles in the world at the moment that I can't say without getting demonetized is drying up the well a little bit. And as a result, we are primarily pumping out what we can consistently keep up with. However, normally we do combo tutorials, how to play videos, all of that kind of good stuff. We do a lot of vlogs as well, particularly at locals and regional events where we can get to them. When they're back on, that's exactly what we'll go back to. If, however, there is something that you'd like to see on the channel, definitely reach out and let me know. I'm easy enough to find on social media and always receptive to that kind of stuff. 
I also take as much time as possible to read as many of the comments as possible, so let me know down in the comments exactly what you think of the videos and the channel as a whole. But that's enough waffling on for me, you want to get about your life, and as such I'll shut the fuck up now and allow you to go on your merry way, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.